Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spinning that YouTube dial in my direction and joining me as I explore the incredible wide world of pens. Yes, I have a new pen. Yes, I ordered it and it was delivered from China. Comes in this frosted case, which we've seen before. There's a little bit of a logo there embossed in the corner. Need to catch the light on it right to show it. We flip it over, we'll see barcode label. We'll give you the translation of the Chinese. And then we see that insert, which Moon Man has been known for for a number of years. So this box doesn't have any of those new Moon Man traits. We open up, we'll see she looks familiar. Q1. This pen comes out, and as you probably recognize from the label, it's a C3. I had a number of viewers ask about this pen. And that's probably the main reason why it's in my possession. When I first saw the pen for sale, it didn't excite me. Yeah, that roll stop looks kind of eat. It has the same type of threading like a C2. Yeah, the acrylic is done well. The cap comes off in one and three quarter turns and we'll see a Again, okay, but why does it have a number five nib? And again, it's the old style design. So I get a feeling this is like a X inventory pen. I don't know, it's just my feeling. And as you would expect, or not expect, it posts very high, very shallow, not very secure. So another one of those designs where they could have just narrowed this a little bit, millimeter or so, and then the cap would have been able to post very nicely, but they didn't. Such is the art of the design. The section unscrews. Takes a little bit of an effort because, as you could expect, there's an O-ring in there. They did give you an eyedropper, so that kind of gives away <clears throat> one of the filling methods. Also, a converter. Yeah, pretty nice converter. And I'm certain some cartridges will fit, but it's not something I'm into. So that's nice with the O-ring there. You know, we'll explore the pen a little bit more. We'll take it apart. And primarily, we'll compare it to a few of its predecessors and see where it fits into the Moon Man <coughs> transparent small size pen series. So inside the uh, pen case was this typical instruction manual that Moon Man includes in a lot of their pens. It shows almost every filling system they make. Which ones do you recognize? Which ones do you own? Here's the pen partially disassembled. I couldn't pull the feet out, but the nib came out, but that's what I was really after, whether we could pull the nib or not. And the auction listing describes those two O-rings, very reminiscent of a pen BBS nib collar. A nice O-ring above the threads on the section. Yeah, I took the converter apart to get rid of this metal insert that's in there and all silicone grease everything before I put it together. No need to do the LED, but maybe we might look at how that roll stop is attached. And also, some of the visual properties of this resin. Hold on. We'll play the LED on the resin. You can see it's that nice plug of acrylic at the top is good, but we've seen this design before. 
the uh, section threads in the middle of the cap. Eh, we've seen that design before too. And if we look at the barrel, we'll see the same nice resin with that same nice plug at the end. And as you can gather, it's fairly transparent. And the light looks good going through that. The barrel plug. These are the first three pens I'm going to compare. And they're Moo Man pens. And they're in the C series. So this is the C1, which I reviewed back in June of 2019. The link will be in the description. Here's the C2, which I reviewed a month later. So these are all mid-2019, and here we are close to the midpoint of 2021 with the C3. The C1 has been inked up since day one. It's a great writer. I enjoy using it ergonomically. The nib is good. The flow is good. You uncap it, it writes. Great pen. As you can see, the C2 is not inked up. I inked it up to review it, plushed it, put it away. Not a pen I liked. Again, the link in the review in the description. So the C3 kind of combines a little bit of elements of both of these. It has that nice little plug, top and bottom, a little bit more rounded where this is very square. It does at least make some attempt to post. This one, the C1, does not. It also has the threads at the end of the section, which it shares with the C2. Neither This one has a flat spot that kind of works as a roll stop, but not as effective as this moon man thingy in the cap of this c3 speaking of caps let's uncap these and look at nibs and sections so the first thing that really pops out is we have a c1 with a six nib the c2 with a six nib and the c3 they put a number five nib on it and this is bigger than the c2 so from the size of the pen and everything else that number five nib just doesn't make any sense in my mind and this is the old style nib. This is the newer style nib. And I love these Moon Man number six nibs. I've also enjoyed the number five one, but it didn't wow me like these two do. And this is a great size section. I didn't like this pen with the nice and extreme hourglass section. This one has a little bit better section on it. All of these, uh, the nibs pull out, unscrew. So there's a lot of options. If you don't like the nib. So here's another collection of Moon Man pens that I put in the same family as the C3. This is your Lakai, which was the first one they came out with many, many years ago. The first pen was great. The cap unscrewed with less than two turns. Then they did something to change the threads and it took a lot of turns, five, six, seven, something like that. Then they come out with the M2, which I think was a great pen. All these have number five nibs. So that's one thing this C3 shares in common with these other ones. And then they made a change to the M2 and put some anodized section here. And some people didn't like the red band. I kind of think it looks good. Colored band at the end of the barrel to match the color of the section. Again, the same number five nib. And I've enjoyed writing with the nib that comes with these three pens. In addition to the fact of being a number five, I've swapped in Knox, and you could swap in any type of number five nib if you wanted to change the nib experience. So here we are with them uncapped. And the M2 actually posted fairly well, as you would expect with those bullet-shaped ends. The original one didn't post at all. You could put the cap there, but it didn't stay whatsoever. The C3 is just obnoxiously long and doesn't post well, but you can put the cap there and it will stay under normal use. So here we are with the section and nibs. And you'll see what I say about replacing a nib. Here I put in a medium one. It only came in extra fine and fine. This one has a 1.1 stub, which works really, really well. And here's the other M2 that I didn't swap the nib out. As you can see, it's exactly the same nib that's in the C3. And there's two years plus difference between these two pen models. So I don't quite understand uh, Moon Man not putting in a number six nib in their new design. 
The section on the M2 I liked the best. The Lakai was a little bit thin, but had a nice flare out at the end. These do not. And of course, this one has the threads there, so it kind of gives you a stop for your fingers to rest on. This is the ink I decided to put in. Haven't used it for a while, but I wanted a generic type of an ink. And this is a 350 milliliter bottle. Bought it for 20 bucks on Amazon, but of course you can't fill from that bottle, so I fill up my nice little ink bottle that I got with my uh, 492 Year of the Rat Pen from Pen BBS. Works good, looks good. Just put a little label on it so I knew it was in it. And I got a full fill. And I did the same thing that I did with the previous pen I reviewed, the TI-200, and I had a big air gap in it. This one, as you can see, is pretty much 100% full. Let's see how that Pilot ink writes. So we've now come to that editorial part of this review. And I have to say that I'm not wowed on any level with this pen. The price is on the high side for what it is. It comes in three colors. I kind of like this one. The blue seems to be like the color in that C2 one I showed you earlier. And depends on the, like I said, on the expensive side. Here's some listings on eBay. I also found it on AliExpress. Even though some of the pen prices might be low, they all include some shipping. So the total delivered price is pretty much close to this one. And the other thing that's going on is it's also sold on Amazon. And you may think it looks attractive. Maybe I can get some fast shipping. But when you check out the item, you'll see that the shipping is your typical three, four, five weeks from China. So the cap comes off with not too much, not too little amount of turns. And lengthwise, it fits in the hand fine. And we already looked at how it posts, so we're not going to discuss that. We'll give you those dimensions. The section just feels a little small to me. I usually make those comments before I actually measure it. But I'd say it's, it's probably less than 9 millimeters there at the very narrow part. And there is a step up that you don't feel. And of course, there's no threads there because the threads are at the end of the section. Depends on the light side. We'll give you the weights. So I'm certain you can all really gather this is not a pen that is, I'm enthused with on any level. I know a lot of people, at least from the comments that I received on my videos, are very interested in the pen. But let's put nib to paper and give you a rating. So one thing that's apparent with this nib is uh, you, you do get some decent feedback. It's not enough to detract from the writing experience, but just you need to be aware of that. My K required some attention. It lays down a decent amount of ink for a fine nib, which is very typical of this number five Moonman nib in my prior experience. I think we need to rate the pen, and you need to spell rate. It's a tough one. I'm going to give it a 7.3. It doesn't get any checks. I'm not enthralled by it. Why do you have a chrome roll stop and a gold nib? Again, the pen seems to be just not well-conceived, designed, just a mishmash of different form and function that 
don't work together in my mind. It's also on the light side. It doesn't feel substantial. It doesn't feel that good. So this is not recommended. But as we all know, your mileage can vary. This may be the perfect pen for you. It's just not the perfect pen for me. We've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I did decay pretty good there. Hopefully this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, enjoying putting ink on paper, finding a pen you love. And if this is that pen, then I think that's excellent. It's just not my pen. We've reached the end. And we will say bye. See you soon. Stay tuned.